Bateman Hart, and you're listening to the Smack Raw Podcast. Okay, well, has this always been a thing? Where have I been? <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Smacked Raw <laughs> Podcast, Monday Night Raw Recap Edition. Uh, uh, we uh, are your hosts, uh, uh, Kyle Tyson, Kevin Crazy, and of course, uh, uh, Katie Kitty, baby. Ow! Fuck! <laughs> I need my hand are on my mic stand. Okay? I'm okay. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm injuring myself on the set. Damn it. Live, too. Careful, careful, careful. Oh, my oh God. My God. Oh, I'll be okay. Uh, we're a wrestling recap show, you guys. <laughs> we stream live yeah. on twitch.tv slash uh, putting you over. And, of course, we're on YouTube at uh, slash smack drop podcast. And, of course, everywhere else, audio uh, versions of the show can be found. Um, and, of course, we're the exclusive recap show for yeah. wrestlingnewsworld.com. Check them out. Read their articles. A bunch of talented writers over there. Uh, it's a lot of fun interacting with them. Oh, man. Hey, you guys. Hey, they there? are right. They're okay. Okay. <laughs> They're good guys over there. Kevin, how you doing, buddy? Well, I'm a good man. I hear me? Yo, trying to fuck this show up as much as I possibly can, like always. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, cracking. <laughs> Arguably oh the most God. controversial uh, just, joke uh, we've ever cracked. Thank God it's not on the recording. If you're watching the show, does anybody want to hear it? Let me no, know in no, the chat. I'll no, tell it again. No, no, no. <laughs> if you want to no. hear jokes like this, if you're listening to the recording, uh, tune into our live streams. Kevin, Kevin brings the heat. I will say that he brings stuff that. I don't want on the official. Recording. It was uh, listen. It's a pretty controversial treat, tweet. Tweet. Uh, uh, tweet. No, tweet. I didn't. I will not tweet that out. As a part of UWO. Shit. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do that. <laughs> how how's loyalty J saying he can PayPal Kevin twenty five dollars to listen. say the joke on air? Loyalty J, hop on the Patreon, bro. Look, man. Here, here it is, right here for you. If you, if Loyalty J, if you sign up for our $25 tier, we'll save the joke on air. No. <laughs> Absolutely. No question. I'll say it three times. Uh, no. no. <laughs> Katie, how you been? Uh, you just, you now I'm uncomfortable. To, you went to uh, Salem for Halloween, didn't you? I did. It was great. Yeah, was everyone like partying like crazy? Not really. I mean, the one they have like one main street that's like full of the shops and everything. That was, I mean, kind of busy, but it wasn't that bad. Everyone was dressed up. People were dressed up in like inflatable dinosaur costumes. Fucking great. <laughs> that's cool. So they didn't they didn't go like you know crazy with like the COVID scares and stuff because like here in North Carolina, well specifically. The town I live in, the neighborhood that we went trick or treating in last year, which is actually the one I reside in. Uh, this year, I took my kids, and I think it was not even like a third of the houses wow. participated this year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, um, but I mean, my kids are five and two, so I, they were just happy to go out and walk around for a half hour. So it didn't really yeah. affect them. But me as a dad, like, it was so sad to see like. Because it wasn't, you know, normally Halloween, you turn your lights off, right? You're like, I don't want yeah. people knocking on, you turn your, you turn your porch, uh, porch light off. It wasn't that. So like about three or four houses in a row still had their porch lights on, but you could see the people indoors through their windows, um, like mm -hmm. refusing to answer the doors. And oh, that's, Jesus. oh man, it broke my heart, bro. <laughs> that's awful. Yeah, that's man. Sad. I was, I was emotional. Like it took like about. 15 20 minutes it felt like before the first person gave my kids candy and as like a dad you know i mean i get it but like it was just it was rough you know <laughs> oh yeah that's savage man holy shit yeah afterwards though afterwards like it was like it had a heavy end you know that's all it was like the first the first several houses weren't picking up but towards the end there was more so it was at least it finished strong mm. word word but anyways katie you said you said it was a 
it was a it was a pretty good time huh yeah it was a it was a blast went to a lot of like the witchy type shops i was gonna get a tattoo but i was like no i should have ah. i'm mad <laughs> did you oh, have well. a design in mind literally just something small something spooky i was gonna put it on like my ankle or some stupid shit oh you should have done it i should have me and my one friend were like tattoos tattoos and then we just didn't yeah you know know, next time though tattoos kevin do do you have any tattoos yeah i have two you have two what do you got on my leg uh, I have the Operation Ivy jumping dude, and I have the hourglass with wings of Lawrence Arms thing. If anybody's heard of those bands, you're awesome. I was like, yeah, no, those both went like right over my head. Well, there you go. Operation. <laughs> I mean, yeah, two, two of my favorite bands. That's all it two is. Two of your favorite bands. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, man. I got, I got like, uh, I have one, two, three. I got four. I got four tattoos. I have four. Yeah? Yeah. Man, I, I thought you were clean. I didn't think you had any. Oh, that's Yo, right. my brother, my brother has about four million tattoos. He has a, he has a fear and loathing in Las Vegas fucking sleeve on his one that's arm. Awesome. It's nuts. That's pretty dope. Yeah. <laughs> my late friend, uh, Kyle Jarrett, he would have loved that, man. He was a huge fan of fear and loathing. Oh, me too. He, my brother was too. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> Is that enough banter? That's enough banter, right? Enough no, banter. no, no. Let's keep talking. Fuck it. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> you know what we don't get enough of? Stickers on our Patreon what? at patreoncom slash for our podcast. Uh, you can sign up for five dollars, ten dollars, twenty-five dollars. Hell, even a dollar, man. Just sign up, support us. We'll appreciate any help that you guys are willing to give the show. Um, truly, man, truly, it's 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 awesome. Anytime I see that notification go off, I'm like super happy that you guys enjoy the show enough to actually contribute to it monetarily wise. Uh, it's really dope. So if you want to support us, head over to patreon.com slash Um uh, We're all super, super appreciative. All right. <sighs> Monday Night Raw. Monday, Monday Night, Raw? Night Raw, you guys. I think that's why we're here. Um, nope. Well, Savannah, I just wanted to let you know, uh, your cosplay is on point. So you look, you look great. You know, I mean, the the the. I can't remember. I know I saw the Chris Jericho and a few other ones. They're good. They're good. You don't look twelve. What did Savannah cosplay as? I, like I said, there was a there was a bunch, but uh, I just remember the Chris Jericho one the most. She did the pain maker. Ah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Savannah's in our live chat over here on Twitch. Uh, they're arguing over how old she looks, and uh, yeah, it went completely over my head. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to call it out because she was like, "Yo." So anyway, anyways, she's a Patreon. She deserves it, you know. She is a patron, man. Um. Monday Night Raw. What'd you guys think tonight? Solid. Better than I expected it to be, honestly. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't bad. No, no. I feel like it had a strong middle. Like, the Mm. beginning and the ending were both kind of flat, but the middle was pretty meaty. Um, Fuck, what happened to my notes? What did I do with my notes? What are notes? (laughs) Something that hosts do. Yeah, Kev. Yeah, Kevin. Kevin. There we go. I'm just here to look good and, you know, have the draw. You guys take care of the business. <laughs> Kevin's so. here for the demographic. Yep. Um, yeah, no, it was solid. We had uh, it, the I love that the world title uh, picture is wrapped up between four people. That's always pretty cool. Right. Have yeah. Multiple people in a story instead of just like two in a feud um of course meaning drew uh randy uh the fiend and miz uh, that's pretty neat what else yeah. tucker debuted his new look that that went over well <laughs> Dude, if that was not the most generic look i have seen in a long time holy like moly. a freaking creative superstar yes 
before you yeah. start actually customizing them. Yep. You know, like <laughs> yeah. exactly. He'll just get a little. He'll just get a little different every week when you like start to. It's, it'll be like when you start to learn how to use the create a superstar suite better, and yeah. you get to make him look how you want to. So that's that's what it'll be. It'll just be an evolution of that. I mean, bold of you to assume he'll be on TV like every week. Yeah. Well, uh, there's that too. I mean, <laughs> that's that's fair. <laughs> uh, Angel Garza trying to seduce the camera. I got to ask you, I mean, we'll go into it when we get there. Is he seducing someone specifically or was that the audience? Oh, I don't know. Maybe his wife at home, but I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Nah. None of my business. None of your business. Um, I'm really stoked for the Survivor Series team as they're coming along. Talk Mm -hmm. about a strong team, man. A strong raw team, yeah. Uh, and then we got cussing on the Firefly Funhouse, dropping f bombs, <laughs> dropping f bombs on Raw, man. Excuse me. Yeah. Oh my god, dude. I was about that, man. That was awesome, dude. I, I was so into it. I think, I think, you know, I think they should do that more. They should just bleep totally. out cussing more. Just, that's just me, though. That's just me. Uh, Katie, how did we kick off the night? <coughs> With that. Um, Not with coughs. Coughing. Uh, Randy Orton comes out uh, basically saying eight days ago he became a 14-time champ. He's the best of the best. He is the best, period. But, I mean, eh. Uh, he's better than, like, <laughs> he, <laughs> he rattles off, like, <laughs> Edge, Taker, uh cena flair bunch of other people michaels he's uh no longer the legend killer he is a legend is and a as legend. soon as he started saying it i was like he's gonna say legend yeah i knew it that was cool though i liked that that I was see- a that was a nice touch <laughs> i saw a meme it's funny too because it was i think it was today literally before raw someone had posted a meme it's the crying michael jordan meme and it was captioned like when Randy Orton becomes a legend and realizes what he has to do. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, oh, Jesus. Oh my gosh. Oh man. Uh, it's, it's rough. Yeah, he's he's a legend. Um, he is a legend. Yeah, uh, the Miz, <clears throat> not the Miz. Excuse me. Uh, the Fiend's uh, constantly teasing. He he uh, his his. I believe it was the lights were flickering and they had the siren um however during the siren instead of the fiend popping up uh randy orton ate a claymore kick and then to everybody's delight the miz came running down with Uh john morrison ready to cash in Uh, i'm looking at randy orton the whole time like is this one of those things where carmella would look at like charlotte and charlotte slowly rising to her feet so carmella says no Nah, it wasn't that. Randy Orton's lifeless. Miz cashes in and fucking hell, Drew McIntyre. Uh, puts a stop <laughs> to all the fun. Claymore kicks the Miz, beats up him and Morrison, and then proclaims that nobody's taking that title from Randy Orton other than Drew McIntyre. And um, to that I say, Drew, you're no fun. I've lost you. Your baby face <laughs> is over now. That, that fun ruiner. Is Drew, you are no fun. Well, I get what you're saying, but I I thought it fit with Drew McIntyre's character for sure. You know, I mean that that feels like something he would do, whether he's a babyface or a heel. You know. Yeah, I mean but that's just no. I get it. I get it. And <laughs> I said it on. I can't remember what show I said it on, but I was like, I was excited that we're gonna have all these attempted cash ins in foils. You know to really show that the money in the bank is a thing because that's the fun part of the money in the bank right. is when no. will it be cashed in. But damn it, if when you see the Miz ready to do it, if you don't want him to just get that title again, you know? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I wanted it to happen too. And I was like, fuck yeah. Like, and not only that, I was like, oh, is this when John Morrison's going to turn on him finally too? And Nah. Because that would be dope, too, you know? Nah, that's not going to happen yet. 
All right, crickets. Or fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I responded to you, but all right. No, you re you didn't respond fast enough. No, I'm just. <laughs> Mute yourself, please. I'm not. No. Um. Um. <laughs> anyways, Kevin. <laughs> Jesus. Backstage. I was just trying to crack some jokes. You you guys you guys are no fun tonight. You're you're Drew you're the Drew McIntyres of the Smack Draw podcast, and I don't like it. Listen, listen, in, in my defense, in my defense, when I hear you guys talking, that's when I try to interact in the chat. So if I'm no selling you, it's it's just me trying to get in the chat. My apologies, Kevin. I'm excuses, sure you said something excuses. Really funny. All right. I'm just gonna no sell you because that's what I can do. Oh. Well, you suck, so I don't care what you do. Wow. <laughs> you two are like the, the the lead force behind AEW and NXT. You can't have this kind of dissension. Anyways, Ms. Morrison challenged I Drew am. McIntyre to a handicap am. match oh. later in the night. <laughs> yes. Um, Kevin, are yeah. there any good pole matches in the history of pro wrestling? I don't know. I, I this is like tonight was like probably like the first time I've ever actually seen one, and it was it was whatever. I didn't have a problem with it. This is the first one you've seen. Yeah, probably. Wow. Kendo stick I, on a pool match. We had Judy Bagwell. No, on a I mean match. like okay. Viagra on a pool match. WCW's pool matches were crazy. Okay. I know. Yeah, I never really watched WCW back in the day. Because I was a huge WWF fanboy, right? And uh, you know, I've only been back into wrestling for like three years. So shoot yeah, me. It, it, the stipulation of on a pole has always been weird. Because half of them, it's the same thing as a ladder match. It means victory. Yeah. And then the other half is it just means you get to use a weapon. Like we've yeah. had kendo stick on a pole match before. I think that was like Becky Lynch and somebody. I think it was Bliss and Bailey. <clears throat> oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, that's right. Because uh, and then that was where like everyone was like Bailey got buried because that was supposed to be her time to come up and mm -hmm. she got laid the f out. Yeah. No, pole matches are fucking lame, bro. They're, they're lame. Like <laughs> they are. Like don't even hide it, man. Pole matches are just they are absolutely lame. I think the only way you can redeem them is if you don't take them seriously and they're comedic. Kind of like um, uh, the the mo the mimosa mayhem match that was never meant to be taken <laughs> seriously. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was mm -hmm. a silly stipulation, yeah. and which led to kind of like a silly feeling match. But like pole matches always feel serious nowadays, and it's fucking dumb. Like <laughs> it's they're really dumb. Um, with that being said, I did appreciate Jeff Hardy with his fruit stripes outfit. Anybody yeah. from the '90s will remember that gum. That looked pretty good. Wow, yeah, you know I, I loved stripes, it. Katie? Yeah, you know about fruit stripes? Uh, yeah. Shit, that's awesome. Were you? Man. I didn't think you would. I thought fruit stripes were gone, like in '97. I thought like that zebra died, their mascot, so and then we just never had that gum anymore. No, it was definitely around in like the early 2000s because I was born in '96, and I distinctly remember going to the gas station and buying it no as a shit, smaller man. child. Yeah, man, that gum like, fucking flavor lasted for all of like 15 seconds. 30 seconds. Say, it wasn't yeah. very good gum. <laughs> <laughs> but it was delicious, all right? Yes, it was. Oh, it was. It was a great 30 seconds. Did, did anyone but... else remember it having a giraffe mascot? No, I the zebra is all Yeah, I, I think I was just mixing it up with Toys R Us. You know, like <laughs> 90s branding or some shit. Because I, here I am trying to Google. I'm like, I don't remember the name of this gum. I got to remember it. Anyways. I don't remember. What uh, the name Jeff of it Hardy is. wins this match. He he grabs the 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 fucking guitar and uh, jumps off the top rope, smashes it over Elias. Uh, this feud, this feud is dead in the water. But didn't I didn't even break. No, it looked hurt. It looked painful, man. <laughs> it did look painful. <laughs> I pose you this. I pose you this. I hope this is the blow off. This is what I would do both with both guys. I say Jeff Hardy moves on to a feud with Umberto Carrillo. I think that would be good. Ooh, I think those guys dope. could have some good matches, give Carrillo some shine. Yeah. 
Like, Creo can be it can be two baby faces. Creo can turn heel. Jeff can be heel. I don't care how you do it. I think those guys would be fun to watch. I'd, I'd tune in. And then I say Elias just beats the piss out of everybody in the 24-7 division. Like, just... Because <laughs> yeah, Elias yeah, is like... I can see that. Yeah, yeah. Just have, him, just have him beating up. Not even wanting the 24-7 title. <laughs> just... They keep, like, forcing him to be in 24-7 title matches and shit. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Yeah, just... Just have him, just have him beat up everybody in that in that uh, championship scene. That's what I would do. That's what I would do. Well, I bet, I bet him and Truth would be real funny together. Honestly, yeah, I bet they would too. That would be pretty dope. What else, man? Yo, uh, oh, what'd what you else? think of uh, Dana Brooke getting some shine against uh, Shayna and mm-hmm. Nia? Or was that was that like a burial in your eyes? I don't see it as a burial. I mean, I, I can see how you would, but like, I felt like she uh, was holding her own, you know, she like, I popped cause she did it. She uh, uh, countered the uh, coquina clutch or whatever the hell Baszler calls it, Co- you know, Co- 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 Cofita. Cofita. whatever <laughs> she countered it. And I thought that that was dope. I was like, Holy shit. Clefairy. I swear I do wear a wrestling coronavirus podcast. clutch. Oh Jesus. Um well anyways, yeah. No, I thought she did good too, man. I thought she looked good. She got out of it. She got out of it. Dana well, got out of a fucking out of Shayna Baszler's finishing move. Well, um, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. That was dope. I mean Baszler ended up getting her later on, obviously, but like that was I, I thought uh, that said to me that it wasn't a burial. You know what I'm saying? That it was like Dana Brooke is going to be for real. I missed what happened to Mandy Rose, though. Kara Fuda, thank <laughs> you, thank you, Savannah. Uh, was, was, I try to I try to do the voice to text. No, Google does not recognize that yeah. word. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, what happened to Mandy Rose? I missed I missed that part. Mandy Rose was completely absent from the match uh, when I finally was paying attention. Yeah. So um, after <laughs> after she uh, Dana gets tagged in. Mandy tries to take Nia out or something, uh, and Nia just like over on the outside, and she's out for the rest of the match. Okay, yeah, that's right. Did y'all think that? Because- oh, and Lana, Lana was out there too for whatever reason. She was out I- to try and cost Nia reason. and Shayna. Yeah, we know damn well that's the reason. Out of boy, there you go. <laughs> Kevin. Why does he get encouraged to drink? And it's like Kevin's taking a bong rip. What an asshole! No, I thought she was cheering you on, Kevin, for mentioning. No, no it was me. It was me. It was oh, it's me pouring wine. Okay, sorry, Kev. I misread the situation. Okay, <laughs> you're all right. I appreciate you putting me over, though. Yeah, I was trying to let you take credit for that one. <laughs> Anyways, I thought I thought for a moment. That was Lana's comeuppance. That they would get distracted trying to attack Lana, and then uh, Mandy Rose and, and Dana Brooke would win. Uh, was not the yeah. case though. Uh, Dana got out of the choke. Shayna was, uh, uh, but rolled up Shayna. However, unfortunately, uh, the ref was distracted by Lana. Uh, Dana did get a solid five count. You know, a, mm-hmm. on a, like officially, it was only a two count. Um, and then, of course, they come to the Carefuta Clutch. Uh, afterwards, though, the craziest thing <coughs> happened. Lana did not go through a commentary table. <laughs> we all were in the group chat like, wait, what? Where's the table spot? It was the weirdest thing, man. It was the weirdest thing. It didn't make thing. sense. It didn't make sense. It did not. No, like there was a generic Randy Orton promo going on backstage that they cut yep. away from. I couldn't hear a word of it because I was like, wait, where's the where's the table spot? Like when they cut over the <laughs> Randy, that's all I can think about. I was like, they're gonna cut back, right? Like yeah. Randy's gonna be in the middle of this interview, and they're like, wait, hold on, there's action going on in the ring, and then Lana's <laughs> going through a table, but it never happened, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> we learned why that is later, though. We learned why that is. Yep. Uh, inarguably, my favorite uh, part of the whole show, though. I ain't gonna lie. Um. 
Kevin. Yo. Does WWE really need to crack jokes about the water boy in 2020? How old is that fucking movie, bro? <laughs> Yo, I don't know. I would I probably before Katie was even born. And, and I mean, I'm not even saying that to be funny. <laughs> before but like, I mean that in all I'm seriousness. I'm looking up when the fuck it was made. Hold on. Sean late Ross 90s. Stats. Late 90s. Sean Ross Stats mentioned it, but uh, I didn't put it in my notes. I'm 98. Saying I was two elated. years old. Suck it. <laughs> I was going to guess. I was. Suck it, Jesus. Well, you know what? I was 14. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh Anyway, no, because actually I remember my aunt took uh, my brother and I to go see the theater when we were kids. Really? So, there you go. That's yeah. amazing. I think that was like the last of Adam Sandler's great 90s movies. I would totally agree with that. Because yeah. you have, but, what, uh, what do you got? You got, I mean, the duo, the top two was, of course, going to be Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore. And then yeah, from no there, from there, I think you got Waterboy, and then maybe it's a tie between Big Daddy, and then what was the one where he was from Hell? Uh, little uh, Nicky. Little, little Nicky. I think Little Nicky. Fucking that one was love good Little Nicky. Yeah, Little Nicky and Big Daddy. I think well, like, fight for fourth place. I kind I like uh since we're talking Sandler movies. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think anger management. Uh, deserves a mention as well that's good but that's that's past uh the the 90s sandler oh that's appeal. true that's true i think i think the five movies i laid out really capture like 90s sandler humor even if i believe little nicky came out after 2000 i think it did it did um yeah i'll, just, I'll throw sure. the wedding singer in there oh shit no my Ooh. bad Three way that tie for great. first place. Yeah. Three way tie for first place. Wedding singer. Jesus Christ. How does this like 17 year old girl fucking outshine us? On first of all, I'm 24. <laughs> 17 year old girl. Not 17. I am a legal ass adult. Doesn't look it, but I am. I, I appreciate Doesn't. you throwing in the wedding singer because all I can picture is our listeners like raging. How the fuck is this dude overlooking? The Wedding Singer. Wedding Singer is iconic. Yeah, man. Yeah, it really is. John Lovitz, man. John Lovitz was in that damn movie. <laughs> yes, he was. He was the rival Wedding Singer. <laughs> <laughs> he was, wasn't he? He was the yep. perv in um, Little Nicky. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, he had that. <laughs> Here, we're going to go. We're deep dive. Uh, he was. He did that uh, uh, late, uh, mid, late 90s. Uh, animated show called The Critic. I remember where he that. played I a movie that. critic, John Lovitz. Yeah, I remember that, that, show, that show. Kind of always rubbed me the, the wrong bomb. way. Like I'd see it and I'd be like, something about this disturbs me, and I couldn't watch it. Like that was kid. kind of that was partially the point. Yeah, but I get it. <laughs> Anyways, about, anyway, uh, about Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do we leave off with? Oh yeah, our no, but oh, this is what oh, I wanted to yeah, say to tie it back in. Our truth mentioning to... Waterboy. <laughs> Bring it back. <laughs> yeah. Well, the reason why I wanted to say that like that shit worked for me is because our truth is like nine hundred years old or whatever, and he makes jokes about like you know John Cena being his childhood hero Although and shit. So I was like, years of course he's Cena. gonna make a Waterboy joke, you know? Yeah. Shut up, Kyle. I know. I love it. I love it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, our truth yeah. thought um he was gonna meet Bobby Boucher, <laughs> and so that he had his water bottle ready to get a, a fucking signed, get it yep. signed. That but unfortunately, hysterical. he had a match against Bobby Lashley. Which, by the way, if you guys remember, it was only a couple months ago. Bobby Lashley was squashing our truth week in and week out. Oh yeah, he was. Like during the initial <laughs> formation of the hurt yeah. business. Yeah. Um. Yeah, our truth though was like, look, you're a champ. I'm a champ. There's no need for this. And he just lays down. He's like, pin me, Bobby Lashley. <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. That was hilarious. Oh, man. Uh, Bobby Lashley, of course, uh, denies. Tries to pick up Truth. Truth kicks him in the head. Tries to get some offense in. But then eats one of the most destructive spears I have seen in a long time. Truth mm -hmm. does a complete backflip. God damn it. That dude is athletic for a man. Uh, probably closer to 50 than he is 40. Mm -hmm. 
it was it was incredible. Bobby Lashley puts him in the hurt lock twice. Excuse me, you mean the the Nelson from Simpsons? The Nelson from Simpsons twice. <laughs> Only when it's applied to truth should it be called that. Well, yeah, but that's it should always be called that when it's applied to truth. Oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, uh, closely mirroring what we saw earlier in the night, Gulak runs out, ready to pin <laughs> truth. And Bobby Lashley attacks him. I'm like, what the fuck is going on tonight? <laughs> right. With people just denying other people championships. I was, it was very confusing. Uh, Lashley puts Gulak in the hurt lock like twice as well. But then takes Gulak and just throws him on top of truth and lets him still get the pin. <laughs> that was hilarious, too. I thought that made perfect sense. I was like, hell yeah. Hell yeah, Bobby Lashley, you badass. Oh, shit. You know what that means? Hmm. Gulak got the 24-7 championship. Yeah. And yeah, Gula Gulak is champion. Did not yeah. lose it by the end of the night. Question. Oh. Does he lose it on Twitter before Raw <laughs> next week? Do we I get mean, a video clip? I mean, did he lose it on Raw Talk? Is that a thing? Oh, that very could Oh, that's that true. He could have, well yeah. happened. I'll check. Oh, no. <laughs> I bet you Kayla Braxton is 24-7 champion right now. <laughs> <laughs> that would be incredible. <laughs> I swear to God, if you look up Raw Talk and he's already lost it. Wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me. I miss some of those like Twitter uh, clips and shit. Of, like, the, oh, Jesus. Dude, like the truth in uh, Drake Maverick. <laughs> That was so like at his goddamn wedding. That was so good. That best damn feud. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Fucking Drake Maverick's amazing. That's like my yeah, biggest regret is. for not watching NXT regularly is missing everything that's going on with Drake Maverick. Oh, oh him and Killian Dane are so good. Yeah, they from are. from what I've been seeing on Twitter, they yeah. they do look like they have like hilarious segments. From what yeah, you've been seeing on Twitter, awesome. or what you've been hearing from our NXT recaps. No. <laughs> oh. oh. Damn it. Go ahead. Damn Go ahead, it. Kyle. Go ahead. Wow, that that I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> you you gave me two shows and you don't even watch one of them? I feel personally disrespected. I don't watch any podcasts anymore. I don't. With with hosting, like it's so weird. I I have a hard time. I do I do go through the clips though. Like I'll I'll like listen to a segment, fast forward to another segment. Um, that's how I checked on RN and Kevin, and they seem to have some pretty good back and forth. Did you watch their show? I caught most of it. Yes. Well, I was in a car ride for ten hours, so I did my best. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Now Kyle's just checking. No. Kyle. Just checking, so I'm not telling like Benoit jokes and shit. That's stop. all. Stop, Kevin. Stop. 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 Stop it. <laughs> also, he did not. Hey man, lose I, it on I'm Raw trying Talk. to make that quick. He didn't lose it on Raw Talk. I'm trying I'm, to make I'm that quick. I'm switching uh, the topic. Quick... Shut up, Kevin. Shut up, Kevin. I'm switching the topic. I'm trying to make that quick. Twenty five bucks. You know. I mean. Stop. <laughs> stop. Oh my god. What, Katie? Anyway, What's wrong? <laughs> anyway, Drew Gulak is still 24 7 champion. <laughs> Fuck off, Kevin. I'm going to become 24 7 champion. Fuck you. Please. Oh, no. Go ahead. Yeah, that shut you right the fuck up. Yeah, Anyways, I thought so. The Lucha House Party <laughs> was backstage. They teased like they were going to run in, but for whatever reason, they ran into uh, AJ Styles' bodyguard, and then their night was over. They They are just main event bound right they're not even in because oh, the cruiserweight division is now officially nxt they can't even mm -hmm. go after the cruiserweight title these poor guys uh right they are the bottom of the 24 7 division and easily man it sucks too because dude because they're you, really good they're, they're go back and watch the cruiserweight classic watch lindsay mm -hmm. dorado watch grand metal league their matches phenomenal some of the best matches stuff that you only see new japan aew and and now they they're lucky to get like 90 seconds of airtime <laughs> oh, jesus before they they kind of had that inner feud and shit like that you know um and what they're doing 
uh, lately. The last thing I remember them doing was getting uh, squashed by uh, Lars Sullivan every goddamn week. Mm-hmm. Like all three of them. <laughs> or infighting with Kalisto. A lot, of, a lot of good came of that, right? We got Well, that's what I mean. Off. Yeah. Terrible. Terrible Stupid. stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, Nia Jax is not happy about Lana's involvement in the previous match. She lays out a challenge uh, for Lana. Threatens to not only take her out of the Survivor Series match, but end her career altogether. At this point, you're like... Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, there's the table spot we were missing. Tables! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Murder! <laughs> yeah. Murder, Jesus. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and before we got to that, we got probably one of the weakest segments followed by one of the best matches of the night. Um, I would agree. Yeah. Uh, AJ <laughs> Styles is out. This is super convoluted. It, it, was, it was really weird. Yeah. These guys' promos had almost zero chemistry however their match was amazing uh to try to yeah. summarize it aj styles is in the ring is proclaiming that he is the captain of the raw survivor series team he calls out keith lee and sheamus who both come to the ring is pretty much telling them to bend a knee like a uh wish version of roman reigns uh they argue over <laughs> who should be captain <laughs> And then eventually, out of nowhere, Braun Strowman comes out, proclaims that he should be on the team, which then Adam Pierce is like, you need to have a qualifying match, but I can't find you an opponent. And then Keith Lee says he wants to fight Braun, so does Sheamus. So then AJ Styles says, how about this? You guys have a triple threat match. And then if Braun wins, he's on the team. And then Adam Pierce is like, yeah, that's cool. And then it's set up for a triple threat. It was so long and stupid Mm -hmm. but thank god the match was badass like the triple threat between those boys oh my god dem boys yeah dem boys man it was really good Um, no it it really was and and you know what i like man is that like it's so rare that you get like the big dudes fighting big dudes you know and that's true i i eat that shit up you know so it's weird because Seamus is like a small big dude, but he's still a big right. guy. He's a big boy. Uh, he's like 6'5", 6'6". 270 pounds is what they were saying on air. Seamus is 270. He's not small. And he looks skinny compared to Keith Lee. And compared Bronx to Freeman. those guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. It's crazy how he looks like a small guy and he's 270 pounds apparently. Um, AJ Styles straight looked like a child compared to the rest of those dudes in the ring. <laughs> yeah, like you see all those memes online, like an exaggerated height difference between like a guy that's five ten and then a guy that's six foot. That's AJ Styles in his bodyguard right there. <laughs> oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. Um, no, nah, yeah. man, they had a great match. Uh, Braun Strowman does a fucking cro- double cross body uh, through Keith Lee and and Sheamus through the barricade. That mm-hmm. was pretty cool. Um, I didn't really have like a spot for spot, but like the second half of this match picked up so good. Sheamus delivered a white noise to Braun Strowman, wore him like a backpack, and made it look easy. <laughs> mm-hmm. That is insane yeah. how easily he did that. You don't see power like that since John Cena. Like the only guys that you saw it like do that was John Cena. Sheamus held Braun Strowman in a way that was like, dude, he could have ran laps around the fucking ring the way he held Braun Strowman. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. amazing. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> Keith Lee looked like he was going to powerbomb Braun. Sheamus hit him with a bro kick, though. Uh, Braun Strowman then power slammed Sheamus for <clears> the win. <throat> the segment that followed it was actually pretty funny. AJ comes in the ring. He's congratulating all three guys who have wiped themselves out. Oh, by the way, on commentary, the whole match, AJ Styles is like urging everybody to calm down and not hurt themselves because they need to be ready yeah. for Survivor Series. But uh, Keith Lee, like a good man, he's willing to shake Braun Strowman's hand. Sheamus is apprehensive. He slaps Braun Strowman's hand away but delivers a painful-looking hug. They slap <laughs> the shit at each other. Mm-hmm. Um but then he bro kicks 
uh, Braun out the ring. Keith Lee clotheslines Sheamus out the ring. And then AJ Styles drop kicks Keith Lee and then just starts screaming at the heavens. Like, why? <laughs> it's like, why can't we all just get along? <laughs> Dude, if that team, <laughs> like, I don't even know who the fifth member, like, that as a four-man team, that looks, like, dangerous as hell. Like, mm-hmm. super Oh, dangerous. my God. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I think that uh, with, with the way that team's shaping up, I mean, Raw's got a pretty good advantage on SmackDown right now, at least with the, uh, the men's team, that's for sure. Not only that. That just made me think. I was like, damn, Raw fucking killed it in the draft. Like, they really did. Yeah. Look yeah, at yeah. everybody in that ring, man. Like, I know Braun mm-hmm. Strowman has this stigma about him, but when you have him mixing it up with great matches like that with Sheamus and Keith Lee, you're like, fuck, dude, Raw is stacked, bro. It's too bad. Yeah. Most of the time, their stories are shit, though. Well, there's that. I, I've never understood, like, the shade at uh, Strowman, honestly, because, like, I mean, he's an attraction, first of all. You know, he's just a big fucking little Katie drinking your goddamn tea. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. And, you know, I'm I'm a total mark, so I don't give a shit either. You know, but I love that shit. I give me big dudes like that that look like fucking humans, GI Joes, and action figures all fucking day, and uh, I'll eat it up. That's that's just the way it is. Katie, why do you think people have a, a issue with Braun? I mean, because for the longest time he was just doing just squash matches. Like they were just like, oh, big strong man destroy little humans. I mean, now, I mean, he's definitely better now, but I, I don't know. Well, I wasn't that, around um, for that. That was like two years ago. <laughs> I mean, you weren't around for that. I don't. I I don't remember. I mean, honestly, maybe I did see some of that. What I remember when I first got in, uh, he was like uh, kind of feuding with like Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns, and I thought that shit was dope. So there you go. Braun at his peak was feuding with Roman. He yes. showed his comedic chops with Elias. The issue with Braun was when it came to the main event, when it came time to pull the trigger, he always lost. Same mm-hmm. thing with Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe, I think yeah. right now is zero and eight or zero and nine in world title shots. Like Sounds has had mm-hmm. has had a ton of uh, title shots. Has lost every single one. Braun Strowman has literally won one. And even then you can argue it was intended for Roman Reigns. Yep. But because of the coronavirus. Oh yeah. oh yeah. You know, it was just it was, you know, right place, right time. Yeah, I think that's the issue with Braun is he's meant to look scary, but anytime it's ever counted, he's he's failed. Like he's just always Here's... failed. Uh right. No, I get that. But like, for me, man, if I was, I think that's more of an issue of booking because like, I don't think that a dude like him oh, absolutely. necessarily absolutely, need, yeah. well, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, I think that a dude like him, like benefits more from not having a belt than having one. Like, why do you need to legitimize a dude that's that fucking scary with a goddamn championship belt? You know, I mean, Andre the Giant never fucking had a championship to the to the best of my knowledge, and he had he it was once. The scariest but I think motherfucker in sold it to the world the, to Ted DiBiase. <laughs> Sounds right. I think. Oh, is happened. that what happened? Okay, I believe so. I wasn't watching wrestling then. I'm just trying to go by old YouTube videos. I wasn't alive. So. No, I I really don't know. I mean, I know that like they they deliberately tried to not put the belt on him because they were like, well, how the fuck do you take it off of him? You know, <laughs> and you know, um, and I think that like Strowman could could be that to some extent. I mean, today obviously there are dudes that are closer to his size. I mean, Andre the Giant was who, was a big boy who, at the time. Who else was big? Yeah. yeah, I mean, you got Daba Kato, Braun Strowman, you have the AJ Styles yeah. bodyguard, Jordan, I think his name is. Mm-hmm. He's got some big boys. I can't wait to see what Jordan does, man. I can't yeah. wait. I cannot yeah. wait to see Jordan come out and do something cool. Uh, what I'm wondering is going to happen, though, is with Garza, because we got a little bit of a segment. He's trying to seduce 
either a an individual uh, <laughs> who's watching him because he's 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 just he's 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 talking all sexy and stuff, you know, to the camera. Although we're apart, mm-hmm. we long for each other. I don't know if he's talking to somebody specifically or if that's just his character and the audience is supposed to be infatuated with him. Uh, but then he lets us all stay on The Bachelor because he gives us all a rose. Okay. <laughs> he extends a rose to the camera. That's all I that can was think funny. about. It was, it was stupid, but whatever. Garza's doing something. Um, <laughs> well, that made, I mean, that made sense for what was going on before. But yeah, I mean, like, I, who knows? Because like when there were still crowds and shit like that, like he would, you know, throw his pants at women and stuff like that and go give him kisses and shit. So mm-hmm. who knows? He could have just been like, yo, WWE universe, I got you. But then again, maybe it was a specific <laughs> person. make who love knows? to the WWE universe. Mm-hmm. This is weird. I uh, mean, if there's Firefly a dude that Funhouse can do it, happened. it's Angel Garza. So, you know. What is happening? I have no idea, Katie. I have no idea. And I just realized, like, we still have a lot of stuff that happened afterwards. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, what is happening? I'm I'm giving some great wrestling analysis, and you guys are no-selling me like a mother... I'll tell Benoit jokes again. No, Stop. it's cool, Ben. No, 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 we're fine. <laughs> Stop. The Firefly Funhouse. Early in the night, we saw uh, Huskus and... Um, Ramblin' Rabbit alluding to there's like a swear jar and I was trying to figure out what the <laughs> hell that was about and then we found out uh, during a Firefly Funhouse segment we're getting the whole you know the dichotomy of Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt their history all of that stuff uh, it pans over to Abby the Witch and Abby says Randy can go fuck himself <laughs> that was so <laughs> I couldn't believe it, man. I couldn't fucking believe it. <laughs> that was the greatest. It was so yeah. out of fucking nowhere, man. Yep. Um, Alexa Bliss <sighs> says, "Yowie, wowie, you can't be cussing." And Abby says, "Alexa, you can go fuck yourself too." <laughs> ah! I know. This is some bottom of the barrel fucking humor, man. But I love this so oh. much. It just it hit out of nowhere. Well, that that's, that nowhere, I think that's why man. it worked. I think that's why it works so well because like WWE never does shit like that. You know what I mean? So like when you pull that shit out once in a great while, you're like, holy fuck. What, WWE. When was the last time on raw they aired like an intentional F bomb, even though it was bleeped, it was bleeped of course, but still yeah. as part of the dialogue, I can't think of a single time. The closest to know. it was, I imagine a mistake was a Alexa Bliss beating down Sasha Banks and saying like you ain't shit, and they just picked it all up. Bailey um, yeah. beating down Banks. Who did I say, Alexa Bliss? You said Bliss. Yeah, yeah, well Bailey, but still. Uh, <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! You can go fuck yourself, man. I was like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, man. Yeah. Abby the Witch is a savage. Dude, Abby I guess. Holy shit! It was so good. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean, I honestly, like, I, I remember there was more to it. Oh, yeah, Bliss also, with the weird shit, says that she has a trick she wants to show us. Um, and so Bray Wyatt holds his heel hand over her head. She has her demonic, like, contact lenses in and then spits out, like, this red goo. Uh, it, was, it was pretty cool. It was like Drago from Lucha Underground, if anybody ever watched that shit. Uh, he did kind of something similar. He was a dragon, and he had like a gummy tongue. But oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was it was it was interesting. But I it I mean obviously the highlight of that shit was was Abby dropping a couple f bombs. It was it was fantastic. Like Randy yeah. Orton can go fuck himself. Like what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> that was like, so oh good. my god. <laughs> Yo, holy god! They're no, trying to no, capture it, it that. Was like... Go ahead. Oh yeah, no, I I, mean, I didn't. I, like, I thought I heard it wrong the first time they dropped an F bomb and I heard the beep. I was like, "What? Wait, did they really just do that?" You know what I mean? It was just like, <laughs> no, that's them going after that. What that? That eighteen to thirty four or eighteen to like whatever thirty five mm-hmm. demographic? Mm-hmm. Hell, it got my attention. You know, I'm in there. So, yeah, I'm in there too. Yeah, eighteen. Well, if it's thirty four, I'm out. But it's all right. <laughs> Oh, 
But anyways, anyways. I, I, I but mature level. I'm like younger than than Katie for sure. Oh yeah, like no question for sure. I've just you, had more years on this Jay earth. Are just like on an equal plane. All right. <laughs> I might even and Jay be is a child. Less Jay mature is doing than his him. high school homework right now. <laughs> That sucks. I never Jay did would, my homework, Jay. Don't do it. No, Jay I'm just would kidding. be in class during our morning recaps. Yes. <laughs> uh, Jay says I'm in the 35 to 50 demo. Uh, no, I'm not, Jay. I'm I close, am. but I'm not there yet. All right. I, and by I the am. way, by the way, you're blocked from the group chat. Just, just whenever you go back to the group chat, you ain't there anymore. Oh, no. <laughs> That's child <laughs> abuse, Kyle. <coughs> this poor kid. Uh, three times in a day. That's a record. Uh, my favorite <laughs> my favorite segment of the night. I don't know. Where, where do you guys fall on the Lana Nia Jack stuff now? To me, tonight, I absolutely, I don't know what <clears> it was. <throat> I fell in fucking love with it, man. I did. Sorry. <laughs> I got yeah. So Savannah's saying some shit in the chat, and it was funny. Yeah. Oh, Uh, no, but you know what? Here's the thing with the Lana stuff. I I feel like is that like this is actually really fucking good storytelling that they're doing with her. You know, Um, because like who the hell gave a shit about Lana? You know, like at all? And they're we like they've garnered sympathy for her. You know. Like I legitimately like it felt bad for her a couple of times and like wanted her to win stuff. Like she was just an annoying, stupid blonde chick before, as far as I was concerned, you know, like throw away WWE bullshit. You Once know what I'm saying? That Russian accent. When, when she had the Russian accent, she had like this mm-hmm. air of, of strength. But once, mm-hmm. once that was yeah. shed, yeah, she absolutely, Kevin, I completely agree with you. Well, I'll tell you, I mean, when she cut that promo, when she was like, I've been divorced twice and I have an ex-girlfriend, what else are you going to say? I was like, she, like I was a fan shit. right then. I was like, holy shit. Yeah, yeah, it was great. What about you, Katie? I mean, I, I'm yeah, like I'm in the same boat. Lana's been just there for the longest time. I mean, when she was managing Rusev, she was like, she wasn't even in the ring, but she was like this dominant personality. And then once yeah. she like dropped Rusev and then dropped their accent and started getting in the ring, they kind of just didn't know what to do with her. Like she was in that stupid f- fling with Dolph Ziggler and like Summer Rae, and that was weird. It- I mean, now you start to feel bad for her like a little bit. She keeps getting put through tables, like <laughs> yeah. s- well, seven yeah, I mean- seven weeks out of eight. Seven out of eight, man. That's pretty rough. That's pretty. That's that's like two whole months. No, it was it was really good. Like I felt like this was. Yeah. Honestly, it, it kind of surprised me, and it's simple. That's the thing is, they didn't overcomplicate yep. it, but everybody executed their roles perfectly. Um, mm-hmm. from the promo with Lacey Evans and Peyton Royce making fun of Lana, telling her you're about to go through another table. You know, to the match that Lana had, where obviously she stands no chance against Nia. But mm-hmm. as this match dragged out, uh, Nia Jax is beating the brakes off Lana, but she's constantly trying to fight back, even though the offense isn't amounting to anything. It's not like we're getting any false hopes of Lana winning. Mm-hmm. She's refusing to uh, to just back down. Um, yep. Nia's hitting her with the classics. You're an embarrassment. You know, you should just quit is just trying to get Lana to submit and her spirit would like, you know, she refused to have her spirit broken. Even after twice, mm-hmm. Nia Jax could have easily pinned her uh, during the pin process, pulled her back up. Lana mm-hmm. kept striking, kept throwing kicks, even though she looked kind of sloppy and everything. It wasn't meant to make her look, you know, threatening in the ring. It just. It yeah, was yeah. it was fantastic. Lana just refused to die, refused to go away, mm-hmm. um, even though she stood zero chance. Uh, Nia Jax eventually does just hit the Samoan drop, 
crushes her, uh, gets the pin as her and Shayna are leaving the ring. She sends Shayna into the ring to gather Lana uh, and then ultimately does put her through the commentary table like we all expected. But at this point, the <laughs> running joke didn't feel like a joke anymore. Nia right. Jax yeah. felt like a yeah. vile fucking villain. And she and was. Lana Lana's spirit refused to be broken, even though her body may have been. Yep. Um, my hot take from this is, although Shayna plays a very uh, willing role to help Naya, I feel like Lana will win Shayna Baszler's respect. Um, how that will play out, I don't necessarily know, but I would love to see that. Like Shayna sees re- like Lana refusing to die, and then eventually. Right. Uh, become symp- uh, sympathetic kind of like the viewers um, but it was yeah. uh, it, it's it's weird this might be the only week I ever say it because you know WWE they can botch a shit Lana felt like one of the best story roles in the whole fucking night man um, and it's and I'll, I'll go oh, you know oh, I'll yeah. die on that sword man I'll die on it bro tonight but it was cool it was it was fucking dope man no, man, I, I agree. I think that they're building a hell of a, a baby face version of Lana right now. And it's not quite there yet, but it's getting there. And it's it's a really good slow burn to actually, you know, get people behind them instead of like, nah, I'm a good guy now. You know what I mean? Like just some, <laughs> you know, yeah. fucking dumb, you know, baby face turn or whatever, like she didn't really have a turn so much as it was just like, you know, she lost all of her goddamn friends. And then now Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler are just beating the shit out of her every week. And she's like, I don't care. I'm, I'm still going to try. You know what I mean? And like you said, during the match too, you know, like her offense was terrible, but like, it wasn't supposed to be good. It was supposed to be like, well, this is, the best she can do right now and she's fucking doing it you know what i mean and it was like i don't know i think like in in a couple months like people are going to be cheering for her you know like i, I mean i'm all, i'm kind of already there but i'm not necessarily cheering for her to win matches like because i yeah. don't know like i'm just cheering for her to get a win like just <laughs> right 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 to right. turn up lana you know <laughs> i don't know how to well i i'm it. hoping i'm hoping that she'll have a, like a decent performance at like survivor series i think that would be cool that would really cool. kind of um to really kind of you know get her to, to to be able to build her to do something better than just get beat up by Nia by Jackson. Nia Jax, yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean right now because smackdown's <laughs> only got bianca belair Mm-hmm. Um, but arguably, you know, probably the Riot Squad's going to be on there. Um, I would, yeah. Carmella, maybe. Possibly Charlotte if she me. comes back. Yeah. yeah. No, nah, don't do Charlotte. Because if Lana's well, going to have I, a moment, she needs she needs people that can arguably be pinned. You know, <laughs> Bianca, of course, can get taken out by anybody else. But then I can <laughs> see somehow Lana managing to pin the Riot Squad. You know, well, I yeah. don't necessarily mean that like Lana like goes on to win the match for you know Raw, but I mean she's she just has a good showing. You know what I'm saying? Like that she just I don't know. Savannah makes a good point. Sasha Sasha Banks because she's losing the title on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Had a girl. I mean, <laughs> oh, Savannah, you're right. I there. can't. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, she got I can't argue with that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, her business is out. They're ready to collect payment for squashing retribution. Uh, the payment they want, that was gold, of course, is a uh, tag team championship match. Uh, so, of course, New Day comes out. By the way, uh, Sean Ross stats states that Bobby Lashley is eight years older than Arn Anderson was when he wrestled his final match. That is fucking mind blowing. Um just one of those weird things that got wow. tossed out. Uh yeah. Anyways, New Day comes out. They joke about how old Lashley and MVP are. Of course Kofi's up there in age too. Uh, mm-hmm. you know. But um yeah. one of the things I wondered, which was cool because as careful. I was typing Everybody. it 
when they swapped titles with the Street Profits, does that count as an additional title reign or is yeah. it a wash? <laughs> and it was funny because they brought it up as, as one of their jokes. Um, <laughs> they brought it up that Kofi has more title reigns than everybody uh, in the her business combined, which actually turned out that Sean Ross stats once again, uh, if you don't count the 24 seven championship, they're actually tied. Kofi actually equals all the title <laughs> reigns across everybody in that uh, faction. So poor writing on fuck? WWE's end. Uh, anyways, uh, oh. they joke about Kofi's eight second loss. Of course, like everybody always is going to, uh, to Brock Lesnar, oh, yeah, in yeah. which case they throw out a Lana sex joke that, <laughs> That was all that Bobby Lashley could last. Uh, ha. 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 <laughs> I think it's funny. Well, I human. laughed. Whatever. But then, like, yeah, I was gonna say I laughed a little. I felt I felt validated though when I was like sitting there thinking, does when they swap championship reigns, does it count as an additional reign? And then Xavier Woods brought it up. He's like, yeah, no, we're tag, we're ten time tag teams, uh, champs. We beat the. Dudley boys, you know. <laughs> you I mean. Oh yeah, Jesus, yeah. that was funny. But um, no nah, man, they went on to have a good match. I got to tell you one thing though, like during the match, as great as it was, I was just happy because I fucking love like the New Day's uh, Nickelodeon themed gear that they're mm-hmm. rocking right now. Like, oh fuck yeah! As a '90s kid, I'm oh just, my god, like, all about that shit. Like, I can't help it, man. Yep, it's awesome. But. Her mm-hmm. business won, man, and they won fucking clean as a whistle. They did. Yo, her business, U.S. championship and tag championships. They're they're going to do the draped in gold angle. I just don't see, yep. obviously, I think so. MVP ain't going to get that world title, but they'll have all the other gold. What did, yeah, I don't, I don't see MVP with the title. Either, no, no. But. What Kyle, about- a 70s baby. Oh, my God. Yeah, Jay. Anyway. You, you fucking blocked, bro. Give me a second. Once one of these people start talking, you're out of the fucking chat. <laughs> you're out of the chat. Um, what about a... Uh- Savannah goes growing up with bell bottoms. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, my God. I'm not even the second oldest person on the show. Like, I'm, I'm actually not. technically, like, in the middle well rn and i are real close like i yeah, i'm no, like you, older if, than him by anything, like a couple like, months if there's four of us now i'm on one of the youngest side i'm actually the second youngest person on the show what the fuck you guys yep it's <laughs> anyways true. anyways it's true uh okay boomer <laughs> Oh my god. This is where well, the Savannah tries to said chip away was... my fucking ego. I'm about to ban everybody from the chat. The Smackdraw family is about to disband, okay? Jesus. Um, wow. <laughs> no, I'm you guys you guys Jeez. Naomi, Jesus Christ, back to what I'm trying to get to. Uh could we see <laughs> a US tag and women's championship all in the hurt business, assuming Naomi joins? I mean, I could definitely see Naomi with the championship, no question about it. And uh, obviously, it looks like they might put belts on Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander there, you know? So, yeah, I could I could absolutely see that. Shelton hasn't looked any better since joining the Hurt Business. Yeah. No. Yeah. He's just kind of been there. No, yeah. It's, it's that's, I could see it, man. I could see it. Uh, backstage, Nikki Cross confronts a possessed Alexa Bliss. By possessed, I mean she has the weird contacts in, which is like white and red. It looks like <laughs> almost two sets of contact lenses. Um, but it looks cool. It looks cool. Uh, so we got this big tease about retribution. Mustafa Ali is gonna say you're gonna see. Retribution turned a corner tonight. They interfered in a match between Ricochet and Tucker. That's how you build Retribution. 
they beat up two guys that lose on main event. And they did nothing to elaborate yeah. on it. Nothing. The only thing they did was they beat up Tucker, but which, which, by the way, uh, more people were talking about Tucker's new gear than the fact, <laughs> like, of the match that was going on. They beat up Tucker. He got s- he got squashed in like a minute. By the way, he got yeah. squashed in like a minute. Oh yeah, by fucking Ricochet. And not that there's anything wrong with Ricochet, but no, I was like, Jesus wrong Christ, Ricochet. man, they there's are doing Tucker wrong. dirty. Oh, you shut up, like. I'm not going to listen to your ricoch- ricochet slander. Dumpster fire, bro. Jesus. You're a dumpster fire. A fucking oh dumpster my fire. God. He wasn't before he came to the main <laughs> roster, but that's none of my business. He was kind of even in NXT. I mean, he got he got the, you know, North American Championship. But really, was he doing anything to stand out? Other than getting he... super kick to the middle of a moonsault. Oh, it's fucking beautiful. Oh, that's I could his watch best highlight. Every day. That's his best highlight in NXT was eating a fucking super kick. I mean, you could say that or anything in his debut, which was the uh, North American title match and the ladder match. Yeah. That was his debut match in NXT and he killed that. Yeah. One match. Hey, hey, my, my kid wants to say hi. Is that okay? Yeah, man. Tell hi. Him say hi. Hi. What's up, bud? <laughs> See, they're talking to you. Hi. You need a haircut. <laughs> he gave himself a haircut the other yep. day, actually. Oh, he's going to eat your headphones, Kevin. <laughs> well, you know, hi. it happens. All right, buddy. <laughs> okay, okay, bye. Have a bye. good one. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways. Put some he was, clothes I, on that kid, bro. Put some clothes on that kid. It's like one o'clock in the morning. He's in bed. He's in... <laughs> Yo, I don't have any pants on right now, if you want to know the God's <laughs> honest truth. So Oh my gosh. Um I the show. Katie looks like she's gonna fucking die. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> so I hate the, the show. The only story angle that came out of this was out of Mustafa Ali. He says uh, no sin is forgiven until it is punished. Um, mm-hmm. In which case, uh, Ricochet is asking, like, why are you doing this? Uh, I, I, I mean, it's yep. not it's not like we didn't see this coming. Right. But, like, fucking Ali got us all hyped on Twitter today. It was like, you know, new new retribution, new big thing. Your big thing is you're beating up main event guys. Like you're beating up dudes that are on main event. The the only reason they were on Raw was because you were beating them up. They wouldn't have been on Raw, man. It was a sixty second match. Uh, it was fucking stupid. Um, Ali's gear was banging though. It was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I liked that. <laughs> <laughs> uh Kyle, you were kicked from the uh the chat. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. <laughs> oh Jesus it's all Christ. Good. I have you guys on mute all the time anyways. I mean same. <laughs> yeah, so it's all good. This anyway. is this is the implosion of the Smack Raw podcast. Everyone's just at, gonna like, start blocking each other right now, now that I've told you this. And the whole group yeah, you has. you literally blew it. You were like, oh, you want to get rid of them? Mm. Block them. Block them. You'll kick anybody out. <laughs> By the way, yeah, yeah think- if you're on Twitter in any group chats, if you want to kick someone out of the group chat, whether you're an admin or not, just block them on Twitter. It will boot them from the group chat. Uh... <laughs> now he's gloating in the. He's gloating now he's all gloating over the, the damn place. Is it Jay? In the Twitch chat. Of course it's Jay. Yes, of course it's Jay. Yeah. Yeah. Jay. child. Yeah. yeah. That broke out. Go to detention, fucking... Jay. Um, <laughs> He's not even old enough to have a job yet. Yeah, well, he said he had a debit card, so there's no excuse. Which, <laughs> speaking of, Jay, where's our money? Where's our money, Jay? Yeah. Jay I told Ben Benoit joke, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Seamus has Drew to join the uh, uh, Survivor Series team. Sorry, Grandpa. Says, uh, re- remake the, the Celtic connection. Was that a thing? I think before they uh, came to WWE. 
Okay. They t- they tagged a lot before oh, both I didn't of know them that. came. I, I didn't know really, idea. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Um, they looked like they had chemistry. Oh, shit. Like they really did look like they had this uh, chemistry that I was like, I really don't remember these guys uh, being on screen together. Uh, but I remember this was the point where it was like, fuck, who's who's a face and who's a heel? I, I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nobody knows. That's uh, that's Doesn't what Survivor Series does, though. As you're like, oh, forget all feuds and all this other shit. At this point, it's just red oh. versus blue. I was going to say, isn't that part of the point of Survivor Series? You know, that it doesn't really matter, that your brand loyalty is what matters? Do you like that? Like, I hate it, man. (laughs) I'm like, I don't know how I feel about it, but it makes sense to me. Like during during Survivor Series, the dudes would put aside their their feuds and fight for Raw or fight for SmackDown. You know what I'm saying? But it's. Yeah, I mean, I get why there could be some, you know, inconsistencies and some weird they were just shit that could drafted. happen with that. AJ Styles was on SmackDown like three weeks ago. Now mm-hmm. he's like, oh, I want to lead Raw to victory. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's strange. Because, you know, I was, I was actually just thinking about that specific uh, dynamic earlier. I was like, Braun why was would you have Smackdown? the draft like? Yeah, Sheamus why would you have Smackdown? the draft? That's three SmackDown like, guys right before Survivor Series. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. WWE doesn't have make the draft sense. Like it... well, That's I why know. I know that. <laughs> Boo! I'm just saying, like, <laughs> boo this because that's strange. It's always weird boo as fuck. Fuck man. you. Uh, no, I. I I hear you. I hear you because there is wonky, weird shit like that where you're like, why? Why does AJ Styles give a shit about Raw? Why does Braun Strowman give a shit about Monday Night Raw? It's yeah, they it's don't. strange. <laughs> no, but they don't. The only well, person that I mean. I like that if you did really like a... a fuck is Dolph Ziggler, always rocking a SmackDown hat whenever Survivor Series rolls around. Always. <laughs> He's always got. I don't know what it is about that SmackDown hat and Dolph Ziggler. It feels so natural to watch him wear that. He shit. loves his SmackDown hat. Um, yeah, Christ. that was it. Uh, Drew McIntyre, of course, good for tells, Dolph Ziggler. Tells uh, uh, Sheamus that he only has eyes for Randy Orton, and then um, <laughs> how romantic. <laughs> yes. And then afterwards, Drew McIntyre. I'm not even gonna lie. There's there's really no reason to go through the spots. I think, but he wins a pointless handicap match against Miz and Morrison. Mm-hmm. Uh, after which, uh, he eats an RKO out of nowhere from Randy Orton, and then the Fiend's music plays in the background. It's not his music. It's just him laughing. His laugh. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Of course. Oh, is that music. what? No, his music's badass. Uh, his music's badass. His laugh is. Yeah. Nightmare fuel. <laughs> Very true. You know what? This but that's has the point. Me the, the, the the main event, even though we just skimmed it, the the Drew, <laughs> Randy, Miz, and the Fiend. This reminds me of when they did the Universal Championship for the first time, and it was Rock and Austin, and then you had Chris Jericho, fucking just in this feud, completely like had no reason to be there. And then Chris Jericho wound up being the first universal champion. I feel like that's the Miz. I mean, of course you have the added fourth person, but like, are you saying universal championship? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, Finn no, no. Balor what I'm saying is a universal? feud. There was a there was a three way match to unify two championships: the WWE and the WCW championship. And you had Rock and Austin, the two biggest names, but then Chris yeah. Jericho was in there, and you're like. Oh man, there was that's it's stupid, right? Chris Jericho's in there. He was an afterthought. I feel like that's Miz's role in this four way feud. Yeah, it's undisputed championship, not universal. Oh, I'm so stupid. Oh. That's why I was confused. I was like, it was the it was the undisputed championship. No, I am I'm incredibly dumb. You know? It happens. <laughs> no, you're you're, Bro, no, I no, you're not dumb. <laughs> No, 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 no. You're not dumb. 
It happens. I love the I love that the Twitch chat is like fucking doing it in pronunciation. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's no, that's all Savannah. <laughs> he loves Chris Jericho. She will make sure you know. Undisputed, not not universal. Yeah. Anyways, anyways, but you get where I'm coming from. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean it. I mean that's basically what it is. Oh. I mean, what the fuck was that? I just making noises. There was dead air. I'm trying to fill the dead air. I literally was talking. <laughs> I was halfway through a sentence and all nah. I heard is uh, or then, nah. no, I just I just want to talk. Whatever. Fuck it. I'm done. Oh wow. Don't let him heckle you. Good. Hold on. Thank I got God. you, Katie. Ready? Here shut we go. the fuck no. up. Finally. Here we go. Go ahead. Kevin? He's muted. Good. Till he unmutes himself. <laughs> the fucking Christ. <laughs> I can't. I have to do four more shows with him. I'm done. You really do. This week. What is even happening? <laughs> this is the greatest thing I've seen. <laughs> Anybody who's listening to the audio version of this, Kevin's you have making to go watch the, the most out of this muted time. He's got his lights doing some crazy light show. <laughs> I'm assuming it reacts to his voice. Um there's a way you can like sync it to music and stuff but I yeah mean, so i wait. think that's what's going on here is that is he's trying no, to there's a up. there's a there's a there's a microphone in the little power so if you hit one of the music buttons on it yeah you can just talk and it'll it'll pick it up but like the the things down there on the floor so it didn't pick up everything but my kid and I were messing around with it the other night, and that was fun as shit. We it's, were having a rave like a motherfucker together. It still looked like you were trying to give everybody that was watching this a seizure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mission accomplished, I guess. I if, hope if not. somebody I had hope one. not. I hope not. What the fuck, Kevin? <laughs> I don't know. That is... <laughs> Kyle's the one putting evil shit on me. I was just. I fucking can't. I'm gonna. Hey, can y'all clip this on mean? Twitch? By the way, just clip this part, this whole part right here. Uh, anyways, so. Katie, go ahead. Round out the close of the show. I don't even know what I was gonna say. Like, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Kevin, <laughs> I unmute. I muted him again. It's okay. I, I, I don't knew even know it was that coming. All he does is heckle me. See what you left me with. Look, I didn't <laughs> leave you with him. Rob left you with him. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Kevin didn't go anywhere, you know. Like it wasn't like we like we passed him on to you. It was like you just Kevin. Did you heckle Rob? No. (laughs) Rob and I got along real well. I don't know what the fuck Katie's problem is. Are you fucking kidding? <laughs> Thank you, for everybody, watching the uh, Smack Drop podcast tonight. You guys all have a great evening. Make sure to tune in uh, this weekend. We'll be coming <laughs> full gear. Check out the predictions. Uh, hit us up at Smack Draw Pod if you want to give predictions and enter that pool that we have going on. The winner will receive some form of a prize at the end. It's probably going to be stickers. I'm not going to lie. Um, but once again, man, thank you. You all. get to hear my Benoit joke. Actually, that's no. You guys have a good one. Bye. Bye. Katie, I, I actually love you. I'm just an asshole, and it rules. I love.